Let's have a look at two current BenQ 27 inch hardware calibrated display. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. When we're looking at a photographic hardware calibrated display from BenQ, we think of the SW line. I have two models with me, the SW270C 27 inch 2K display and their latest SW271C 27 inch 4K display. I'm going to compare these two, talk about the similarities and the differences, and also have a discussion about 2K versus 4K so that you can pick the best display that fits within your creative workflow. Starting at the top, they're both 27 inch display and because they have the C in the naming, meaning that they have the latest USB Type-C technology in there with 60 watt power delivery. So if you have a modern laptop with USB Type-C, you're set. That one singular cable will do everything that you need, freeing up the ports so that you can use them to connect other peripherals. If you're linking these display up to a desktop that does not need power delivery, well, you're set too, because USB Type-C is automatically going to do the auto negotiation when the device gets turned on, and if it doesn't need power, it just simply won't provide it. They're both 10-bit display, and they are done via an 8-bit plus FRC. This means that majority of color information is being carried over the 8-bit signal. And for us to see the extra 2-bit to get us to the 10-bit is done via frame rate control, meaning that some of the pixels on the display are changing a different frequency, making us see the extra 2-bit information. This is a really great technology that really brings the value to these pro display market at a price point that is attainable by most creative pros, including myself. Both of these display are IPS LED backlight, which means that they have an amazing angle of view. So if you need to collaborate, well, they work great for that. Or even if you have multiple display line up and you have to angle some display, as you turn your head and look at some of the displays that may be towards you at an angle, you're going to see the exact same color. Their LED backlit, meaning that the color information is gonna be really great. And BenQ have fine-tuned LED backlit on these display for a very long time now. So they have this down to a T. Both of these display have anti-glare coating, minimizing any reflection and distraction that will come from the environment. And the other positive thing too about having a matted display is that you are seeing the true accurate color without any bias. So the way how I put it is this. If you can edit your image or your creative work so that the color really pops on these display, they're gonna look even more amazing on a glossy display panel. However, that doesn't really work the other way around. Both of these display have a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, which is pretty much standard for all the IPS LED backlit. They come with a hotkey puck gen 2, and also both of these are compatible with M1 right out of the box. They can run 4K60, well, on the SW271 anyway, uh, without any issues at all. And in fact, both of these are now running on my Mac Mini M1, and Palette Master Element can calibrate these two display without any issues. So we're gonna have a talk about 2K versus 4K in just a moment here. But before we get to that, I wanna talk about BenQ AccuColor technology. The best way for me to put AccuColor technology is hardware, software, and calibration working together in concert to show you a more accurate color or the most accurate pictures that you can see. With this in mind, this being an SW line, we expect nothing less than 99% Adobe RGB, and this display does deliver that. Both of them can show 99% Adobe RGB, which is great for photo editing, 100% sRGB. And when it comes to P3 color space, this is Display P3 and DCI-P3, there are slight variations. For example, the SW270C can show 97% P3 color space, where the SW271C can show 90%. And even though there is a minor 7% difference in P3 color gamut coverage, you're still getting 90% plus on both the displays, so they are still considered really good. They both have a 16-bit 3D LUT, which has been updated from the first generation SW display with a 14-bit 3D LUT, so more color information that you can do adjustment in. You can use Palette Master Element, which is BenQ developed software to calibrate these display and do a true hardware calibration on them. And let me say this, Palette Master Element has gone through a period where there are some bugs in the software. However, BenQ have been working hard and the past few releases have been stable and works really well 
across both Mac and PC. However, if you want to use a third-party software to do a hardware calibration, well, you can do that too. You can use either Calman or Light Illusion software to run a true hardware calibration on these display because that 3D LUT is now open to third-party software support. Both of these display have BenQ uniformity technology, with the SW270C having a second generation and the SW271C having the third generation. The main question here is, are you going to see a visual difference between these two? The answer to that question is not so much, and here's the reason why. With uniformity Gen 2 and also Gen 3, all the color modes on the display, including the calibrated color modes, are all uniformity calibrated from the factory, meaning that it doesn't really matter what color mode you use, you're always going to get uniformity throughout. And that's something fantastic about the SW line and these latest uniformity technology. The other thing too is that BenQ have set a high bar and high standard on the second generation uniformity with the SW270C. So when they move over to the SW271C and introduce the third generation uniformity technology, yes, it have gotten better. The larger area of the display is now calibrated for uniformity and there's more fine tuning that they have done. And in the end, what you're gonna get is a technology and a display to show you really great accurate colors with all these little things that just blends into the background so you don't have to think about them anymore. You just know you're gonna get a great display. The SW271C also features BenQ latest color consistency technology, meaning that if you get multiple SW271C and you set them up right from the factory floor uncalibrated, the colors between each of the displays are gonna be really close to each other. This is something that is not featured in the SW270C, although if you have two of these and you set them up next to each other, they're really just no slouch. It's just that BenQ have really, again, gone in and refined this display to a T. Next up, we have to talk about design. This being a SW display, well, we're gonna get gray throughout, but that is really done intentionally for a reason so that there is no distraction whatsoever and you get a chance to focus 100% on the creative content that you're working on. Comparing the ergonomics and movement between these two display with the included stand, it's pretty much gonna be very similar. You can bring the display up down you can angle forward, backwards, and pan from left to right, and the angle of movement between these two models are gonna be very similar to the SW display that have come before these two models as well. So if you already have an SW display or you have played with one, the angle of motions are gonna be very similar. Being that this is an SW, they both have a handle on the stand itself, which makes moving the display around really easy and very simple. So if you need to take the display on location a lot, well, these are really amazing and easy to move around. Or for someone like myself, I'm constantly setting these up, taking these down, testing different displays. It makes moving these display a breeze. Beyond that, there are some differences in the base that BenQ have used for these displays. So for instance, the SW270C is using, I would say the previous generation base, which is a little bit smaller. On the SW271C, BenQ have gone in and increased the base size a little bit on the display. And the reason why they do this is to comply with European regulation standard, but this also, in a way, makes the display and the base stand a little bit more stable as well. And that's a benefit that we gained from that. Not that the other one was not stable or anything like that at all. It was really great, but in order to comply with the standard, they have to do this. And it is a benefit that we can all gain from there. But if you're trying to get this one, the SW271C, to use with the SW270 or any other SW display, that's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're using it with the included base and also the stand. As I mentioned already, they both have the second generation hotkey puck, which have a lot of great functionality on them and the dexterity for the second generation puck is much improved compared to the first generation. Another thing that we need to talk about too, and this is one of the things that people talk the most about this SW271C is the bezel around the display. And this is compared to the almost infinity edge of the SW270C. Well, one of the things I want to say is that because Uniformity Gen 3, BenQ have gone in and reduced backlight bleeding on these display by so much, and this bezel has an engineering reason and it further reduced backlight bleeding on these display. I'm not saying that all of these professional hardware calibrated displays are 
ones with bezel, but if you look at many of the prominent high-end brand ones, they all have bezel and they're done for these engineering reasons. So BenQ have made the right choice here, I think, going with this design. And let me put it this way. I think that we should care about the design for the object we're using, but ultimately at the end of the day, we really need to find out what's the purpose of this object that we're getting. For example, these display, if we want the best picture, the best color, the best panel possible, well, you're looking at one right here. Both of these displays, similar to many of the SW that have come before them, include a shading hood as a standard accessory so that you can choose to use this hood to further minimize any reflection or any light flare that could result from the display in your environment. In addition to that, the SW271C also comes with the extension pieces needed. So if you want to use a shading hood in the vertical orientation, you can certainly do that with this model. However, this is something that you can't do on the SW270C. Beyond this, we now have a talk about the color modes on these display. They come with all the pre-calibrated color modes that we're used to. Adobe RGB, sRGB, Rec 709, DCI P3, Display P3, DICOM, and many other modes. But two of the ones that really stand out for the SW display line, especially the later generation one, is the advanced black and white mode, which turns the display entirely into black and white so that there is no color biases whatsoever so you can see true black and white, and also the Embo color mode, which is designed to match up an uncalibrated Apple built-in display that is the display inside a MacBook MacBook Pro or iMac iMac Pro. So if you want to get a close match between the Apple built-in display and your BenQ display, Embo Color Mode is going to allow you to do that. The best recommendation that I have and the best practice is to still go in and run a hardware calibration on your display using Palette Master Element. This way you're matching the signal output from your computer to the hardware LUT inside the display. Both of these display have, again, like I mentioned before, a 16-bit 3D LUT and they have three hardware calibration slots. So you can go in and calibrate three different hardware calibrations on these display. They can be used for one computer with different RGB primary, or it can be used to calibrate multiple computers to a singular display. Therefore, regardless of any device you link up to the display, you're always gonna get great hardware calibration and accurate color from them. And lastly, on the SW271C, BenQ have also introduced a new color mode or included a new color mode that they have introduced with the SW321C, the big flagship SW display, and that is Paper Color Sync. So with that, what you would do is download a software called Paper Color Sync, choose the color gamut that you're working in, whether that is sRGB or Adobe RGB, the printer and the media type that you're using. With that, the display is going to automatically program those paper parameters in and adjust the white point on this display to close to somewhere between D50 and D55, depending on the paper that you use, so that it matches as close as possible with the white point of the paper that you're printing out from the inkjet printer. The benefit that you're gonna get from this is being able to prove color exactly as you see on the screen before it comes out from the printer, saving time and also money and resources because, I mean, paper and inks, they're not really cheap, right? So paper color sync is going to minimize a lot of that. So if you want to use paper color sync, if you want to get into printing, a quick and easy shortcut way is to look at paper color sync as a feature. Next up is connectivity. Between these two display, they pretty much share majority of the same connection. Two HDMI 2.0, one full display port 1.4. They have USB Type-C with 60 watt power delivery a USB type B that is the bigger connector and that allows you to do a USB uplink. So if you have a computer without USB type C, you would have to use that cable in order for you to do a hardware calibration on the machine. And also on the side of the display, there are two USB type A 3.1 ports and also an SD card reader. It has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with a DAC built in so you can do volume control and everything. So if you want to use a headphone or external speakers via your BenQ display, depending on the connection cable you're using, you can certainly try and do that. In addition to this, the SW271C also have one extra service port on the display. So should you need firmware update in the future, you can certainly do that. Just based on my testing so far though, it has compatibility with all the computers. You can run 4K60 without any issues. So as of right now, I would say there's not really a big need for a firmware update at the moment. 
However, if you do need one in future, this does give you some future proof things that you can go in and run a firmware update on them. And if you need a firmware update in the future at some point, BenQ does not generally distribute these firmware update as a download from the website. The best way to do it is to contact our, your local BenQ support to which the local BenQ support would then be able to give you the files or the link to download that file appropriately. And next up in this comparison that we're going to talk about is 2K versus 4K, which is one of the biggest differences between these two 27 inch display. Let me put it this way. Some believe that if you're getting display today, in the year that we're in and you're not getting a 4k display or if that display is not 4k then you're really missing out i would argue otherwise i would argue that you should choose the best display and the resolution and best fit within your creative needs and also your creative workflow if 2k is the one that fits you best well go with a 2k don't listen to other people saying that you need to get a 4k display it is absolutely not necessary but if you do need a 4k though you should go for that so picking the best display that matches with your workflow is going to be important. Between these two resolutions, there are always plus and minuses, and we're gonna talk about them. Starting out with the 2K display, the one thing I can tell you right now is that it's very easy on the video card. Because if we have a think about it, 2K display comes up to about four megapixels that your video card have to push out 60 times per second. When you move up to a 4K display, that's close to 8 megapixel that your video card have to push out 60 times every second. So you're literally doubling the amount of data that your computer or your GPU have to go through. So 4K is definitely much more taxing in a video card. And the way how this is going to show up on your machine, especially if you have an older machine or a slower GPU, is that you're going to see graphic lags that may happen on your machine. So if you want to avoid those issues altogether and have a really happy machine, happy GPU without pushing it too hard, a 2K display is definitely the one to consider there. Now let's talk about resolution, pixel pitch, and scaling. On a 2K display, you're looking at 2560 by 1440, where on a 4K UHD like this SW271C, you're looking at 3840 by 2160 pixels. Those numbers may not mean much to you, however, it really makes a big difference in usability when you're running this at native resolution. For instance, you plug in a 2K display, you run this at native resolution, you can read the text and see the graphic user interface just fine. Where on a 4K display, most of the time when anyone gets this display, if you ever try to run it 4K native, your eyes are going to hurt because the text and the user interface are really small and tiny. You have to get really close to the display. So most of the time when we get this, we are running this at some scaled resolution, which does introduce its own set of issues. Depending on if you're using Mac or PC, the scaling is done differently. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but this is definitely something to consider. So now before we talk about scaling a little bit further, let's talk about the pixels pitch or how many pixels per inch these display carry. On the SW270C being a 2K, this has 109 pixels per inch. And on this 4K model, SW271, this has 163 pixels per inch. Now, between these two pixels numbers, especially on this 4K model, the number of pixels per inch is not quite high enough for us to reach what we call retina display or HD DPI. Generally, you want that number to be above 200 in order for you to scale and get the text to be really crisp and sharp. So depending on who you are and if you have used this before, especially if you're on a Macintosh system, some will say that when you run this at a scaled resolution, when you run a 4K display at a scaled resolution, the text can look blurry. It doesn't look quite as sharp. I personally like the way how it looks. It's close to a retina. It's not really quite there, but I never mind it at all. But some people do and some people think they're softer. So that's just something to think about and remember when you're choosing this display. Now, the same thing can also be said about the 2K model as well, because some people don't really like a 2K model because they can still see the pixels apart because 109 pixels per inch is less density. So this is really a personal preference, but you really need to take this into consideration when you're looking at these display and when you're getting them to use in your workflow. One more thing I want to mention about display resolution and scaling is that if you're a Mac user, you're not really going to move over to PC because you think PC does a better job with application zooming on high resolution display. And again, if you're a PC user, you're less likely to move over to a Mac just because the way how Mac is doing the zooming and scaling on the display. So those are just additional things to keep in mind that the operating system you're using will make a big difference in the way how these are being run as well. A few more things to compare between these two display is some of the video centric features. 
Both of these displays support refresh rate other than 60 Hertz, meaning that you can go into your computer operating system and set the refresh rate to 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 Hertz. So you can choose between those so you can match them to your video frame rate. Therefore, you're playing your video back at the native cadence, so there are no drop in frame rate whatsoever. One thing to keep in mind is that on the SW270C with certain Mac OS combination, you're still locked into 60 Hertz. And this is something that I'm looking into. So when I have a solution, I'll probably post a video about that. Moving on, both of these displays support HDR10 with the SW271C, adding one more support for HLG, Hybrid Lock Gamma. So if you want to use the display to do 4K mastering, well, the SW271C or the SW321C are going to be really great display to get the job done there. It's also compatible with SDI to HDMI converters from many of the big brands out there, so you're not going to run into any issues at all. And you can certainly use those on the SW270C as well. And the last thing I want to cover about the 2K versus 4K is really more photocentric and is answering the question that many photographers have asked me. If I do printing, am I better off with a 4K display? And the answer that I'm going to give you is that it's not necessarily any better or any worse. It just really depends on your workflow and what you want to have and the usability for the display and the resolution itself. So all the things that I talked about before are gonna be much more important if you're trying to do printing or not. It really doesn't matter too much because even when I zoom into 100%, for example, I'm showing you a 45 megapixel Nikon C7 file right now. When we zoom into that picture 100% on a 4K display, you can see that we're seeing less than 50% of that picture. And we're looking at that on a 2K display, there's not that big of a difference there. Now, what's even more interesting is that I'm going to show you now an iPhone 12 Pro Max resolution. This is 12 megapixel. When we zoom this into 100%, our 4K display can't show us pretty much 100% of what we're seeing from or capturing from the iPhone. And you do get a little bit less on a 2K display. But regarding viewing your pictures and using it in scale resolution and so forth, if you just look at your picture when you zoom out. Are you going to get more details from a 4K display versus a 2K? You're not going to see too big of a difference. So if you're trying to do printing, personally, let me put it this way. I've been using 2K display to do printing for the past 15 years because 4K wasn't even around then. And it has been perfectly fine. But if you want to venture out into using a 4K, you can. All the things that I'm sharing you right now with regards to resolution scaling and everything, the best thing to do is to go to a photo trade show when it's open up again to see how these things look in person so you have a better assessment. The other thing that you can do is go to your local computer store and see how these things are working together in unison. For example, go to a 2K resolution display. It doesn't have to be a BenQ, but at least you'll get an idea for a 2K 27 inch, how the pixels are. If you have to stand back from the display a little bit, how's it gonna look? And if you can also see a 27 inch 4K one, again, it doesn't have to be a BenQ, you'll get a better idea for what the resolution looks like. And I think that you're gonna gain a lot more benefit from that. But also remember a lot of the things that I'm sharing you here too. All right, I hope that you find this comparison between the SW270C and the SW271C helpful. So they're both great displays that can show really great, amazing colors. What it really comes down to at the end of the day is do you want 4K or do you just want 2K? So I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art We Trust. <music>